Happy, happy Tuesday. Hello. I'm Patty. And I'm Carrie. But today only. Today only. I said I'll be Carrie today, but maybe next yeah. week we'll change it maybe up. Maybe we'll be like Chloe and Zoe yeah. or something. Ooh, that would be fun. They rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> Too much fun. Okay, guys, we are DIY and we are Studio R12. Yes. And um, I got a little gift of a cold last week. Um, I've got my tissues. I'm going to try to be quiet if I need them. <laughs> Um, sorry about that. We're going to keep it short today. We know everybody has a lot going mm -hmm. on with the Christmas season fast approaching. So we want to talk about letters, letters and chalk. Yes. We have been asked several times, especially recently, about using chalk with stencils. And um, we've shown you several times how to make it look like you're using chalk. Mm -hmm. But today we're actually going to show you how yeah. to chalk. use chalk and yeah. then what to do to preserve it. Yeah. So, um... You have some. Yes, I do have a couple yeah. of quick announcements. If you are not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, you are going to want to do that for sure. This week, Patty is releasing her three must-have tools for you mm -hmm. to have to do stenciling projects. Yep, and if you're desert island kind of situation. Yes, if you are on a desert island with just you and your three, three tools. Things. <laughs> yeah, what did you do? And then an abundance of Studio R12 stencils. Just fell from the sky. <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, you stencil on a beach. Yeah. I mean, there's worse things. I know, right? There's worse things. But so you're going to want to tune in to see what those are. And then I'm going to have Patty get her big girl muscles out and show you off, show you off, show off what she okay. showed off last week. <laughs> okay. Wow. So last week we released a video on how to make an old window into a mirror and mm -hmm. it's a DIY mercury glass. Yeah. DIY mercury glass. Um, you're probably seeing Dustin over there in that <laughs> mirror. Um, I didn't make it super mirrory. I wanted it super like distressed. Mm -hmm. So you can totally take um, levels of details and do them. It's an interesting technique, you guys. Um, if you have not checked that video out, it's um, carry up the link yeah. um, because it is fascinating. But we also stenciled with spray paint on the reverse to get this word. I don't know if you can see that word down there, but on the video it shows. Um, but it, it's amazing technique. Um, worthy to watch just to know that you know how to do that it's it's cool yeah and you know i think that's at least since i've been here that's the first time that we've spray painted with stencils i think that's true we've yeah. spritzed them with yeah. um our, our with bleach but i don't think we've used spray paint since i've been mm -hmm. here so that that was kind of one of those hey guess what yeah you can do guess this and do. and it was interesting when i was looking up the research to figure out the mercury glass there's a whole bunch of different ways to do it but um the people that were um the people that were actually using the stencil and then spray painting through the stencil they every stinking single one of them did not tape down their stencil mm -hmm. to secure it and so the stencil flopped around and made a really fuzzy image guys a little bit of tape like please do a girl a favor long way <laughs> Tape yes. it down. You know, if you're going to be propelling something mm -hmm. at your stencil, make sure that you secure it down. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm going to go over here. You go off. over there, and I still have a couple things to talk about. So today we are chalking through stencils, and we are going to be using a specific collection of stencils today, and it is our background word stencils. Mm -hmm. And we have these for holidays, seasons, themes. They just have a bunch of words, a bunch of different fonts. Some of them have a couple little designs on them too, like our wine one has a wine glass. But these are really, really, really great stencils to have in your collection because you can do so many things with them from painting backgrounds to painting Christmas cards to painting mm. bookmarks. We painted a journal with them. Just yeah. a lot of cool things. Um, and each one of these, um, this is a, a pet love of mine. For whatever reason, back 20 years ago, I fell in love with the graphicness of fonts mm -hmm. and, and the word design. I love word design. And so when we, when I hired my first designers, the very first, this is the very first thing. I don't know what stencil number this is. Let's see. Um, this one is 693, I think. So very early on, we're at like 7,000 stencil titles now. So 
if you like to have stencils to help you paint, <laughs> um, check our website out. It's yeah. studior12.com. Um, we are all about stencils. But um, we're about painting and DIY as well, but yeah. like stencils to do it and make it easier. Anyway, and then I have always taught, almost since the beginning that I picked up my first brushes, the one hard thing that painters, when you're especially teaching a workshop, hate is to letter mm. with a brush, okay? Um, even if you have a pattern traced, um, if you have a pattern traced and you then have to base it all in, it starts getting scruffy and and yucky around your edges. It's very difficult to keep a really pristine, sharp yeah. image. So a stencil makes it fast, it makes it easy, and it makes it precise. And that's, I just fell in love with all the words. And every one of these, this would make an awesome, this is a little wine, Pinot, yeah. Pinot Noir, I think, um, with a wine glass at the bottom. It would be so cute on a bookmark. Oh, it would be so cute. Yeah, so amazing. But that's that's one design. This is one design. This is every one of these words is one design. So mm -hmm. this stencil doesn't have one design on it. It has like 16. Exactly. You know, so all of these things with all of these words are all things that can be used individually. Um, so you don't just have one. You know, you can make little Easter cards, all the things. Anyway, um, this is that... Um, disc binder mm -hmm. system that you can do where it has a punch and then you make a book so we made a book of all of our words so let's look at this one with the rain and the spring and yesterday on our youtube channel i released a just 30 second video showing three ways to store your stencils and the the binder was one of them and I shared all the links so if you haven't seen that we get a lot of questions mm -hmm. about how do you store your stencils so I showed you guys three ways that we do it and it's just a real quick real quick video to get some inspiration yeah yeah and I think it's really important to know how to store your stencils Agreed. Um, because otherwise they get to be a mess yes um, if they get into a box situation where you just start layering and throwing them into something they're gonna get weighted down and they're gonna get mangled. And so you do definitely have to have like a thought. Thankfully, stencils are skinny and they are easy to um, to store. Yeah, oh, and our background words are on sale today. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you love the idea of having words that you can put in the background of things, um, then you wanna go ahead and see this because it's yeah. gonna be just such a good deal. And these, we don't put these on sale very often. I they was... take the most. Yes. Time. They're very intricate. There's a lot of little details. There's a lot of little words. And let's I was, show a couple of examples. Yes. So this is, I don't know, Dustin, can you get that detail? Okay, so um, this is a, t a tone on tone. Okay, so what I love about this is this makes the words disappear. It's just like almost like fabric in a way. It's just a little hint of something back there behind but it carries the theme around. And then, here's some winter words. So in this case, I use the color to be able to say, this is cold, this is frigid. And then we put the, we did a texture background, we did the words in that teal blue, and then we started doing snowflakes over the top of it. So we made it like a three layer dimensional thing um, love 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 dimension this is a fork knife and spoon great gifts too so you can hang these up we did a little metallic on there there's a video on that and um, and then that's just a very subtle in the background to carry that theme around and then two more and then we'll get started here's one for fall and so this has got your fall sweet fall and then it's got this very faded in the background bunch of fall words going on just to give it pattern and detail and then same technique this one we use the copper on the lettering okay i get that to reflect for you and then just did the brown background with your black words so it's really neat just the different effects that you can get with the lettering and um, create something really neat okay we ready to get let's chalk okay we're gonna chalk today 
All right, so this is an example of a chalk um, design that I did. This is actually, um, so we sprayed matte right here, matte spray, and um, use a chalk to go over and tell the days, how many days it is to count down. And then these are all, I'm gonna go here. Can you see that, Steve, okay? Okay, so these are all chalked lettering, and you can kind of see the roughness of it um, right there. You can see there's a little bit of a pattern there. So you can totally have so much fun with these. So I'm gonna show you just how to kind of approach that. Okay, so we've got some basic tools. Um, we have a piece of chalk, just regular old chalk. This is a chalk holder. Um, this is a magic thing because you don't wanna get your fingers all yucky and nasty and it just lets you actually apply nicely. Um, this is the Triple Threat Ghost Rider. That has a lead, and this is something that I say a lot, but you can just lead on there and then with water spit eraser, you can take that lead away. So it's a ceramic lead. <clears throat> anyway, that can act as if it's chalk. And then these are things that we haven't talked very much about recently. Um, these are erasers. So you get going in your chalking and you don't like what you've done and you've gone maybe a little bit too far or you made a little bit of a mess. You can go with these little erasers and you can clean them up. So this is a super duper precise pointy eraser. I don't know about you, but I have painted eyes on teddy bears and dolls and things like that in my past. And you get those eyelashes glooped up the wrong way and you need to get them erased. You don't want to take out a whole face just to erase an eyelash. You know what I mean? So just having something with this amount of precision, incredible. And then this guy right here is like a little box. He's got super sharp corners. So you can do some flat out erasing on its flat edge and then you can use its little corner to do some precision erasing. Okay, these are amazing and they feed up so you can totally feed them to whatever length you need, amazing tools. And then this is our click eraser. So just having the ability to erase and fine tune is very important. And all of these will fix your um, bleed unders that we've showed you with this tool. But sometimes you might be in a small area and you might need some precision. So you might want something a little bit more. Okay, and then the other two things that I have here is I've got a really soft blendy brush and a really soft, long, blendy brush, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So those are two things that you're gonna want as well. Nothing really grainy. Um, you don't want anything scratchy. Okay, now I've got my surface. I want you to listen. Okay, so I've sanded this side, and then this side is not sanded. So I just used my um, foam brush to give it a couple base coats. <clears throat> Excuse me for a minute. <coughs> okay, so when you are using your um, foam brush like that um, to get your background, um, this is chalkboard, okay? Now, we didn't use chalk paint. We used just our number, how many, 27? 38? 28. 28. So number 28 color. And it's just black paint. Um, and so, but you can totally chalk on just regular black paint, regular green paint, regular any color paint you want. As long as it's got a kind of a matte finish and it's not shiny, then you just roll it on, brush it on, and you are good to go. So you don't need to go buy really expensive chalk paint. All of your paints are chalkable. Okay, so, and I'm not talking about the chalk paint that you use for painting furniture. I'm talking about the paint that you use to chalk on top of. Okay, so we're gonna take our 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a sand. If I'm too shiny, if I'm too smooth, then it will not, um, your chalk won't stick onto your piece. So you wanna give it a little bit of sanding. And then sometimes if I, let's watch this really quick. Yeah, let me take this, you got them? Okay. If I take something coarse, then what you get 
is you get these scratches. And I want to show you what you do to get rid of those scratches because you do not want the scratches. And I've got a lint-free paper towel, my water bottle. And you just wipe the scratches back, okay? And that will take away any of that. And when that dries, you won't have any scratching again, okay? And then if you are going to use this as a chalkboard, um, you can take your chalk and do the side um, of your chalk edge and you can season your chalkboard and then you clean it off with a dry paper towel and then you're good to go um, writing on your board. Okay, but we're gonna show you how to stencil on your board. Okay, so we're gonna take our stencil. Okay. And we're gonna tape. All right, you guys, I want you to give us lots of, what are you ready for Christmas? That's what I wanna know. Are we all ready to go? I'm almost, I'm getting pretty close. Okay. I'm getting there. I, I have most things purchased. I do have some painting to do. What is that? Yep. <laughs> and backwards. Well, you know, I looked at it and I was like, what is going on with my head? All right, everybody give me a big heart because it's like, bless her soul. <laughs> She's cute. I don't know. I was I was doing the same thing. I'm like, something, something is wrong. I don't know what. Okay, we're gonna do, we're gonna paint upside right today. LOL, oh gosh. Oh, the funny things I go through. All right, it's fun to be me, guys. Fun to be me. Okay, so we are going to, if I wanted really crisp little edges, I would use my triple threat and I would just go kind of along there, trace along my edge, give it a little outline. If you make a mistake, I did a little warble there. You can go into your tool and it, it doesn't show, so I'm not even going to worry about it. But we'll straighten this guy up right here. Um, one thing you have to do is you have to work from, and I, I did the bottom. I'm working on the bottom one because it's closest to me. Um, but if you were doing a chalk job, you would start at the top and work your way down so you don't run your arm through your chalk. That'll smear everything. Okay, so I don't want to do that. And then you can take and go into, I've got my um, other tool we didn't talk about, is the chalk sharpener. Okay, so you take your chalk out. It's got different sizes. And you just give it a little twisty poo. It has um, a container down here to capture all of the dust. So it's a really dirt free way of being able to manage. And this sharpener is something that you can get on our website. We do have a few left in stock still. Yeah, so there's a, a couple left in stock. It is something that we've used for years and years and years. Um, so super great, amazing tool. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the bottom just because um, <clears throat> I just wanna show you how to do the basic technique. So then you can do a couple of things. You can go in little squiggles, you can go in a pattern, you can go in lines. So I could go straight down, just doing little choppy lines. Um, I had a little piece of chalk break off right there, and so it was causing me grief. So just blow away any debris. I'm just making big, sweeping little movements. I can turn to the sharp edge that I just made as I get going. And now I'll take a soft brush. And I'm just gonna go in and just pounce and blend. So our friend Amy just like kind of called me out and said that she was all set until I painted the North Pole arrow the other day. And now she has, you know, new projects she has to do. 
and I responded back to her but want it to be known that we were done with our filming as well until we saw her stacked tags <laughs> and that is what inspired us to do all kinds of new projects so it's kind of twofold and yeah. I'm sorry that we both did that to each other. <laughs> you guys, you, you don't know what's gonna inspire you at all. Okay, so we're gonna continue on. Let's take a look at this and see what it looks like. I'm gonna hold here and I'm going to lift up here and bend it back. Okay, so that is the effect that I have if I needed to clean. So it, you'll get little fragments that'll like rub off. If I need to clean, I can just go around it. And there we go. Drop it back down, give it a tape, and then continue. If I wanted to decorate um, my lettering, I could go. And then that makes a little pattern on my letters. Okay, if I don't like it, drop it back down, fade it away. And do you know, we had a question about the brush, if that's a brush that... This is a brush that we've carried in the past. It's a dome blender. Okay. Um, it's a deco art brush. Um, and then this one's also a deco art. This is just a like a little mop. A blender mop, um, but both of them are just really, 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 really soft. Um, it doesn't have to be a specific kind, um, like even just, well, now you really do need something mopish. Yeah, I don't And tight mopish. I don't believe we have those no, anymore. Um, yeah, there is, so with all the companies, um, Low Cornell, um, they got bought out by a Japanese company and um, they, um, the company name is Jarden, and they have just gone through and eliminated all the good brushes that they used to carry. Um, it's been a super frustrating time. Um, Deco Arts worked their hardest to keep us all populated with things, um, but they are experiencing the same amount of supply chain things that we all are looking at this last um, three or four years. It's been ridiculous. Okay, so then if you want to make, say, a stronger um side you could go in and you could even highlight so chalk is just a medium and a medium means it's just something that you use to make a mark with so um, your medium could be cloth and glue your medium could be chalk your medium could be acrylic paint you know so a medium is just what you're marking with um so don't be afraid to just be go crazy with it you know you could totally also stencil with a pencil through our stencils you know so don't be afraid of going and grabbing your watercolor don't be afraid of going and grabbing something else so then if you decided that you wanted that to be like a nice little fade right there i can go in and i can blend it Walk that out. And now let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so now you've got a nice highlight right there up the middle, and then you can go in with your eraser. Clean that up. That's the one thing about using the chalk is you wanna make sure that you are keeping the dusty part of things clean. So don't, don't be afraid to give it a poof of blow on what you're doing and stuff like that. So, um, Pat oh. asked, mm -hmm. um, I've never chalked before. Why would you use chalk when you can do paint? Um, so it's a different look. Mm -hmm. Um, the, <coughs> well, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to pretend like I'm going to need this. I'm going to answer while you're pretending. Kay. Um, for me, and anybody else who I work with that has little ones, being able to stencil with chalk rather than paint is um, sometimes going to be a major benefit <laughs> that if you have little kids or grandkids and they want to color or draw, you can give, you can, you know, let them use your stencils and use the chalk to do it. And mm -hmm. it's a that's lot a good less idea. messy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good idea. Um, so 
one of the things that we so if you look up chalk typography um that was a major major i think it's still a major deal um but it was a big big deal in um the middle 2000s um it was everywhere if you had a chalkboard you were typographying on it um, there's books been published all kinds of stuff so it's a look and it's an aesthetic mm -hmm. and so um, words that are chalked are extremely popular so that that is one of the reasons to do that um, I have made many videos on how to use a gray paint mm -hmm. using our um, scroll <laughs> good lord all right, I just need a nap. <laughs> Swirl. Swirl, thank you. It's not squirreling. Well, I'm squirreling. Sometimes, sometimes it is. I'm just gonna squirrel today. Okay, no, but using the swirling, um, using the gray, really soft, looks just like chalk. Um, I prefer to do that rather than to chalk. Um, and then you can do other techniques to make the chalk look decorated mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, yeah, it's definitely, it's a fun thing to know about, and then whether or not you want to use that, you, you got to make decisions. Um, also, one of the things um, on cleanup, I'm not going to do a ton, like I said, we're going to get you out of here early today. Um, but if I, say, had a lot of stuff that was just littered over here, like my erasing crumbles and stuff like that, I can take just a little bit of water. And then you can go right up next to what you got going on and give it a nice cleanup. Okay, so that's how you can clean up the chalk. And then in order, for instance, this guy, we wanted to have him all chalked. Then I wanted to leave that area so that I could write the letters on there. Then you're going to use the Krylon 1311 to seal it under so it won't lift off. And then you're going to do that everywhere but where you want to actually erase the chalk. Mm -hmm. Well, you can actually use the mat everywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then if it gets too smooth, you can take, so after I've sprayed my th my 1311, um, I can give that a little bit of a scratch, and then the tooth will be back, and I can um, chalk on it easily, if that makes sense. So sometimes it gets a little smooth when you spray things and make things smooth and everything. And then, but if it does get too smooth, let's, let's erase this and do the thing. So got our little letters. Get those off of there. And they've been on there. Ah, betcha. I used to sign and date all my projects. I stopped doing that years ago and it's, it's stuck. I probably have sprayed over the top of that. Um, to get that off, what I could do is just go ahead and sand it off. So even if you've protected it with your Krylon, you can get that stuff off. Paint is your friend um, as long as you don't use sandpaper and rubbing alcohol and all the other things we've taught you about. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a hot second. Do we have any other questions? No, nope, people were just, they were asking how to seal. Yeah. So we were answering it while they were asking. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's, and I think um, once that gets dry, then you can take and say, like, it still feels really smooth to me. So I would give it, yeah, that's better. Totally feel that, like, tooth. So I've got the 60 grit sandpaper here. So now you can take your chalk and give it I don't know how many days it is before Christmas. Is it Christmas oh. time? Were you doing it too? Because that's perfect. What? Maybe. I don't know that it is. Today's the 13th. Yeah. So is it 12 days to Christmas? Yeah, the 25th and 12th. I did, I did something right. Oh my Yay. goodness. Yay. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, but it's what's neat about it is then you can take that, erase it. Mm -hmm. um, if you are in a kid's room though, and you know, you, the kids love chalk everything. So imagine finding um, a dresser and then imagine doing all the drawer fronts in chalk. Mm -hmm. And then imagine being like, you know, socks and underwear, 
tops and bottoms, whatever, labeling them, spraying that down and then letting the kids go to town on the fronts. Yep. You know, so that is going to be labeled forever, but they can just go through and That'd just be super have so cute. much fun. Yeah. You know, chalk is cool. I love chalk. Okay. All right, guys, this is how you chalk. And I hope that you guys have a blessed week and we'll see you on Tuesday.